do this. Welcome back Pokemon trainers to the regional championships here in Malmo, Sweden. We'll be jumping back into another top eight game here, but I am joined by Marcus Satter on this occasion. How are you feeling, Marcus? Yeah, good morning. I'm doing pretty good today. Um, what a long <laughs> drawn out set. Yeah, you were saying it as well on stream just now. Um, how like in the new format VGC 18 with the new your time games mm -hmm. tend to go super quickly, but hey, these two fantastic players, I gotta say it really uh, we're able to play a very long and drawn out <laughs> game there. Uh, and yeah, with Jamie's team, especially uh, interesting how he's able to like switch things up, being either super offensive or really or defensive. Play defensively. And uh, he was really able to use um, yeah all of the options that his team had. Um, in the meantime, of course, some of the other top eight games already concluded. So yes, I want to give you an update on what was going on over there. So we had the rematch from yesterday's last round of Swiss. Ben Markham from um, GB playing against Nicole Said from Sweden. Yeah, rematch today. Yesterday, Nicole at the better end of it. This time around, Ben was the one advancing into oh, top four. Oh, he managed to adjust. Exactly. But there was still one more Swedish player left in the tournament. That was Stefan um, Soto. However, unfortunately for him, he lost against Davide. Coteruccio oh. from Italy. So while Sweden now is eliminated from the tournament, Italy, um, yeah, still has one player remaining. And as UK have two. Exactly, and UK has two. As um, yeah, Italy is said to be um, yeah the strongest nation There's in a lot of rivalries at the there moment. There at the moment. So yeah, we will, we will see uh, if that <laughs> will be true here in Malmo as well. But um, for now, for our next battle, we have two great players as well. It's going to be Eric Rios against Barry Anderson, so another player from GB, as you were saying, and Eric from Spain. I mean, both of these players are, have so many accomplishments already under their belt, and we did manage to showcase both of them on stream yesterday, so you will have a little insight to their teams. But I think one notable team member that I think got everyone talking yesterday was the Jinx on Barry yes. Anderson's side. Yeah, that was a very... Uh, very quirky well, Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, really cool. It's a lot of cool stuff going on with the Adrenaline Orb as the yeah. item, with and Ice skill Beam, swap. Skill Swap. Yeah, some shenanigans going on over there. <laughs> I especially like the f uh, when uh, Persian went for the Fake Out into the Jinx and the Flame Body yeah. activated the Jinx acquired from Vault Corona. But without any further ado, we are already jumping into Team Preview. And on the left-hand side, you have Eric's team consisting of Tapu Koko, Ferrothorn, Gyarados, Heatran, Cressalia, and Landris Therian, while on Barry's side, I'll give you the <laughs> honor to read out those Pokemon Fantastic. names. Fantastic, we have that Jinx, the wonderful Jinx, but also on his team there is Lucario, Tyranitar, Volcarona, Azumarill, and Tapu Bulu. So where you've got on Barry's side that really interesting Jinx, he also has the Volcarona that put in so much work for him yesterday, and I feel like that's a Pokemon that he's got a lot of synergy with. He's well known for being a great Volcarona trainer. Yeah, Volcarona has carried um, Barry to a lot of great finishes in tournament play. Um, yeah, like for like years and years, he even brought it, even used it in 2016 when no one else was really using it. So yeah, um, really um, a player that is yeah, like saying, hey, well, Corona, you served me well in the past. Why shouldn't I'll you be able to, to do it tournament. in this season? <laughs> yeah, and then Eric on the other side, who what a story. Uh, we mentioned it briefly at the end of yesterday's stream, but yeah, Eric was 0-1, losing the very first round. No then we had him on stream for the second round against Tommy Colleen, who went who came here all the way from the US. Uh, what a nail-biting game that was between the two players going up, unfortunately for them, um, at such an early knockout stage. And then we were talking intense. to Eric afterwards, and I asked him whether he thought he would be confident to go for top gun. And he was like, yeah, his team is pretty good. He was 1-1 one one at the time. He, he had to win out his like all of his remaining games, and he was able to do that. So now we're seeing Eric here facing off against Barry. And um, yeah, 
we didn't really get to analyze anything about their matchup whatsoever, so <laughs> um, really interesting seeing it's always a little bit difficult because with these two players having so much time overnight to figure out what they wanted to do, sometimes some really quirky strategies could come out here or some like very specific lead combinations, like for example maybe Oh, Firethorn <laughs> and Tabacoco against a Volcarona and did Jinx. Exactly, Barry's gone for the two Pokemon that he was famous for yesterday, Jinx and Volcarona. And obviously, if you're Ferrothorn right now, you do not want to be on the field against this opposing Volcarona. Um, it's going to be a very, very scary game for him going forward. Um, but as well, you know, Tabacoco, such a speedy Pokemon, no Intimidate coming out from Eric's side of the field. Um, he decided not to bring something like the Landorus or the Gyarados that will activate that Adrenaline Orb that we know is on that Jinx, boosting up its speed. So Tabacoco, still going to be the fastest thing at the moment on the field. Yes, so Tapakoko could go ahead, and as you were saying, with that Adrenaline Orb, Jinx is not carrying the Focus Sash, I believe it was Lucario who was carrying that yes. item. So Tapakoko could go ahead and uh, just fire off with a very strong attack, but talking about fire, that Ferrothorn probably doesn't want to stay around for too much longer. So Eric goes ahead, switches in his Gyarados, Intimidate not really doing too much, but except it's gonna for activate. activating that Adrenaline Orb. Exactly, just mentioning that Gyarados is going to join the party, but Ferrothorn got out of there, it did not want to be facing down against the Volcarona. Fake Heart going to come from Jinx very aggressively, into that Tapu Koko, leaving Volcarona free to go for a Quiver Dance. Barry, knowing that Ferrothorn, even if it stayed in, what could it really do? So the Ferrothorn, um, the Volcarona has managed to get the boost, which is really, really great there for and, Barry, because once you, know you boost what? it, it's so, incredible. And you know what? So usually you would say, oh, well, a Volcarona going up against a Gyarados, that's not going to go too well for the Volcarona. <laughs> but with Jinx, now having the speed boost, it could go for a skill swap passing over uh, the dry skin ability to that Volcarona, hence making all water type attacks useless from that Gyarados. So that is a play that both players have to respect here and um, Barry's going ahead saying, hey, you're probably expecting something like that, but uh, instead I'm just like um, going for an Ice Beam on your Gyarados to do a little bit of chip damage to it. Uh, so my Volcarona um, will have a little bit of an easier time getting the damage off later on, but Eric just going ahead and setting up that Dragon Dance. Exactly, Spear tier, uh, speed tier is just changing everywhere. We've seen the Quiver Dance boosting speed, Adrenaline Orb boosting speed, and now a Dragon Dance from that Gyarados. And interestingly enough, Jinx, you know, it has something like Skill Swap. It doesn't want to give away its dry skin, um, but it could potentially have gone into that Gyarados, gone Intimidate right back onto that Pokemon. But I do think the best play here will be to Skill Swap onto that Volcarona yeah. and protect it from any water type moves. And that's something that we saw happen yesterday against an opposing Tapu Fini. Um, he used the Skill Swap so well so that now Volcarona basically was untouchable. Yeah, at the same time, uh, Jinx could also go on the offensive since uh, with an adrenaline orb it's pretty fast with ice beam as we were seeing already doing um, a, good damage. a decent amount of damage to that Gyarados another decision that is interesting by Eric is not to mega evolve that Gyarados just yet probably fearing a potential giga drain from that Volcarona that we have seen yesterday so this time around, though, just going to protect the Gyarados and I'm um, hoping that Barry was targeting that threat. Well, it goes for a protect and it's going to be a heat wave coming up from Volcarona. It's going to connect and almost is enough to pick up the KO on that Tapu Koko. Ice Beam goes into the protect, though, so Jinx not doing any um, damage this turn as Volcarona will take to the skies. It's really interesting to see Tapu Koko being one of the slowest Pokemon on the field. Yeah, that does not happen too often, but now with that Sky Drop, um, Eric did have the opportunity to go for a very powerful uh, Gigavolt Havoc, for example, to knock the Jinx potentially, instead decided to prioritize um, just lifting up the Volcarona so it wouldn't be able to attack in the next turn. However, now I don't really know like what is Gyarados going to do. It could Mega Evolve and go for an attack into the Jinx, um, potentially Crunch if uh, that is a move that he's carrying. But um, yeah, besides that, with the speed tiers uh, working out the way they are, Tapu Koko will be the slowest Pokemon on the field, so Skydrop will um, yeah, come last. down last, and therefore the Gyarados, unless it is. Um, Trained in a specific way. Wait, did the? Do you think that the Gyarados could potentially be slower than the Tapu Koko even after the Dragon Dance? It could potentially be, and you know, if that Volcarona isn't able to come back down, um, it's not going to be able to move. Nor is Tapu Koko. This could be another Dragon Dance coming out from the opposing Gyarados, just to make sure that he can get his speed up as high as possible and be the dominant Pokémon on this field. But it's just going to be a skill swap coming out from Jinx into the opposing Gyarados. Going to switch Dry Skin for Mold Breaker here. Of course, something we didn't mention before with Mold Breaker, Gyarados actually could play around that Dry Skin. That is an interaction. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to see anytime soon, but um, Gyarados reveals to be faster than the Tapu Koko, so goes for yet another Dragon Dance here. Well, I think it's very interesting then, like, I mean, we didn't quite pick up on the Mole Breaker situation, but it looks like Barry certainly did, and he wants to get that off the Gyarados so that he can potentially even remove Jinx from the field, bring it back in to reset its ability, but there's now no Mole Breaker. So that Gyarados is technically a lot more weakened, because who's going to be firing off water moves into Gyarados anyway? Yeah, so that Gyarados, though, after the second Dragon Dance, um, 
if you have a if we have a look at Barry's team, it doesn't seem like he has any Pokemon with the Intimidate ability, so it'll be very difficult for him to keep that Gyarados in check. Since yeah, we already have revealed that Jinx does not carry the Focus Sash, so Gyarados could just go ahead, um, use Crunch or now uh, even Waterfall. It could have used that before. Uh, thanks to Mold Breaker, apparently. <laughs> so, yeah, that Gyarados uh, on Eric's side, really, really powerful. And I really like the Skydrop play in hindsight now, thinking about it again, because now that Gyarados is outspeeding the b both boosted Pokemon or the speed boosted Pokemon on Barry's side and really has the opportunity to just get um, a KO the next turn if Eric decides to target um, the right slot here. Exactly. Well, one, one answer for that Gyarados will be the Tapu Bulu. Going to bring the Grassy Surge to the field. And obviously with this Grass type, it's going to be heavily threatening against this opposing Gyarados. But with the plus two attack, that is still a threat no matter what is going on. Ferrothorn, though, is going to join the party. It sees Very Grassy nice Terrain, wants to come in as well and be a part of that. And it's going to be the Crunch coming out from the Gyarados revealed there. Going to do about 50%, even though it is resisted thanks to the Dragon Dance boost. But Ice Beam will come off. It's going to connect onto the opposing Ferrothorn, do about a quarter damage. But of course, Grassy Terrain here is going to really help out all Pokemon on the field. Yeah, really nice play there by Eric. Uh, he decided to go for the with a crunch um, on that Volcarona. He was pretty sure that that Pokemon was going to switch out. Also bringing in the Ferrothorn, of course, not something you want to have um, face down a Volcarona. Or maybe Eric was super sure that the crunch with um, his, the double attack set from the Gyarados would be enough to knock out that Volcarona. So now though, with the Gyarados really um, supporting the Ferrothorn in a way that it is checking that Volcarona, Ferrothorn really having a field day here against both <laughs> Tapu Bulu and Jinx. So yeah, Barry Anderson seems to be um, caught up in a position where it's very difficult for him to make progress. I think one Pokemon that he still ha might have in the back um, that could help him in this situation would be that Lucario. Uh, we have already seen that it is, is carrying the Focus Ash and with uh, Close Combat would do a lot of damage to both of um, the fighting type weak Pokemon on Eric's side. It certainly would and obviously if it's got the Focus Ash it is guaranteed to live a turn which can really make or break a play. But the Ferrothorn is going to take another Ice Beam directly from the Jinx and a critical hit to boot. And the Super Power. The Super wow. Power comes out. Doubling in that Ferrothorn, he just wants rid of it off the field and it will be enough to pick up the KO. Obviously Ferrothorn, you were saying it was happy on that grassy terrain against both of these Pokemon, but now it's no longer in play. Yeah, what a play here by Barry, really disrespecting that Gyarados, <laughs> but Eric on the other side was like, hey, yeah, you're probably trying to um, call my move and we'll protect one Pokemon uh -huh. and use the other one to attack him to my Gyarados, so I'll use this uh, free turn for my Ferrothorn, <laughs> but Barry but reading no. into that perfectly, going for the double up into the Ferrothorn, knocking it out with a combination of moves, and now all of a sudden um, um, it's Eric who has to come up with uh, a plan now again. Of course, he still does have that Gyarados. It is still very boosted, now revealing his fourth Pokemon um, to be that Heatron, which is another <laughs> Pokemon you really want to have on the field against a Jinx and a Tabu Bulu. So I think, so far at least, um, it looks like Eric really spent his time over the night figuring things out. Um, bring, deciding to bring both his Steel types to this matchup as well as the Gyarados and leave the more consistent picks like that Landorus, Therian and the Cressalia on the bench. And against someone like Barry, who really has this, um, like, Dedicated his team choice to to counter some of those more common Pokemon. Exactly. It makes a lot of sense, in my opinion, um, to forego these options and instead go with um, like something more unorthodox, like that Ferrothorn and the Heatran on the same. At well, the, same the time. fourth Pokemon for Barry is going to be revealed as that Azumarill coming in. Jinx has left the field, going to reset its attack, and Mole Breaker has now left. But Volcarona is coming right back in. So a double switch here from Barry. Interestingly enough, and it's going to be a crunch, going to connect onto that Volcarona, and it will be enough to pick up the KO. But it also gets uh. burnt in return thanks to that Flame Body. Yes, so. good thing he did not <laughs> swap that away earlier. Exactly. <laughs> and Heatran uses this opportunity to go for a substitute. Heatran's one of those Pokemon as well. It can just hide behind a substitute and fire off really powerful attacks. Particularly, as we know, there's Tapu Bulu on the field and there's Jinx. Neither of them want to take a Heatwave or Flamethrower, but Azumarill might have something to say about that Heatran. But that burn was critical there for Barry. Yeah, certainly. And now that Heatran um, really hiding there behind that substitute, helping it out uh, to take any incoming move from that Azumarill potentially, though the Gyarados on the other hand now essentially is back to neutral attacks it again after those two Dragon Dances and factoring in the burn. So Azumarill of course a Pokemon on Barry's team that is probably like has like one of the best matchups of any Pokemon against that Gyarados. However it is paired up with that Jinx for now so uh, it's like one of those situations where the, the Azumarill beats the Gyarados but the Gyarados beats the Jinx and then the, the Jinx is just yeah, sitting there also not doing too much <laughs> it's like against one big triangle. that teacher and yeah, it's like um, but really that Azumarill is the, the key Pokemon right now for Barry, I would say. Skill swap coming out though once again from Jinx. This time Taking it's away going flash fire. Very That's interesting. I mean it gives it dry skin. Yeah, which... that might be a bad idea potentially. <laughs> but you know, it now can be hit by fire type moves if but unfortunately, that's just not something that Barry seems to have access to on his team. Um, 
Azumarill's going to have to take an Earth Power there, going to do a little bit of damage, mm. and also with the Waterfall Chip, it's going to put it into Berry Range, so it's going to munch up its Citrus Berry. You know, if it got, went for something like a Belly Drum, it now might be in a bit of a pickle, but instead, Play Rough going to come out, connect onto that Dark-type Gyarados, which means it will retreat going back to Eris, Eric. So not only did, you know, it get burned, it's now been KO'd as well. Yeah, so Berry giving away the, the Dry Skin ability to that Heatran, um, really makes me wonder how, what his plan is in terms of dealing with that Heatran. Of course, now if he can get rid of that Tapu Koko, which is at very low HP, and his Azumarill will probably have access to Aqua Jet, um, then it is a situation where Barry can basically like play the entire field and set everything up mm -hmm. the way he wants, but he really needs to keep his Jinx around, I would say, to, mm. to take away um, Dry Skin later on, because with the Dry Skin ability, Heatran seems to be a very strong <laughs> Pokemon against like all three of Barry's remaining Pokemon, and um, yeah, he really needs to watch out a little bit that he doesn't got um, like a little bit too ahead of himself, like swapping abilities around. Um, but uh, so far, of course, it also means that the Jinx is kind of safe from the heat. It, yeah, exactly. Jinx it, it's sort of a cash 22 there. You're giving away dry skin, but you're also then getting something in return. But as you can see here, I think Jinx was listening to you, Marcus. They want to switch it back. He wants dry skin back. And, you know, he's sort of quite happy for Heatran to not have um, access to that move. Yeah, doesn't matter if it has flash go fire. For the heat wave, so. <laughs> it will be heat wave. So probably the worst time for Jinx to switch that back. But now, you know, Barry will be able to bring in Tapu Bulu. And at least his Azumarill is going to be able to fire off water moves into this heat run, but he's got to break hmm. the substitute. Yeah, this is definitely a little bit closer than it could have been, I think. Uh, the Jinx, yeah, it couldn't really have done too much else, but Eric reading those moves perfectly, going for the Earth Power at the turn that Jinx acquired, um, Flash Fire, and then going for the Heat Wave right when Jinx uh, gave it up again. So now, if that type of Bulu is actually slower than the heat run, this might be a, like, like, this might be a victory for Eric because Azumara, if it's depending on the move set, but if it's one of those belly drums set, it might not have a stronger water type attack than Aqua Jet, and that is not going to do all too much um, without the belly drum boost. So we uh, we will see what happens here. Aqua Jet, of course, should be enough to break the substitute, and then Tabu Bulu, if it is faster, could dish out a lot of damage with that superpower. But yeah, it's going to be close here, especially if that Heatran. Um, is outspeeding the Tapu Bulu, but we now already get confirmation that this Tapu Bulu was recovering HP before the heat turn um, off the grassy terrain. So it looks like Barry Anderson might still be the one um, yeah, who can take this game. We'll have to find out in this turn. Aqua Jet will come off from the Azumarill. It is enough to obviously break the substitute yeah, there on Heatran. So Heatran is now exposed, facing down a Tapu Bulu. Now, will Tapu Bulu be enough to pick up the KO on this Heatran? It does a huge amount of damage, but takes it down to 42 HP. Going to have its stats reduced, but it will potentially have to eat a heat wave if it does connect, and it does. Heatran going to retaliate with the heat wave. Going to be enough to pick up the KO, but it doesn't KO Azumarill. Let's see if it gets the burn, because if not, Aqua Jet will be great going into next turn. No burn. A little bit of HP recovery, but Aqua Jet now is so strong. Yes, definitely. And also, um, the grassy terrain, though, if Heatran wants to spend another turn, just going for the protect there, um, and then maybe maybe the double protect, uh, he might have a chance to take one Aqua Jet. Of course, Eric, knowing his outs here, is trying to go for that, but even after that, the, the Azumarill at the same time, of course, is also recovering a little bit of health, um, slowly and steadily each turn, and um, yeah, I don't think that Heatran's Earth Power would even be enough to knock out the Azumarill at this range, so it seems like event in the end, uh, Barry really played out this end game in a way that, like, having it come down to Heatran against Azumarill is obviously very nice for him. Um, Eric attempts the double protect, does fail it, Aqua Jet comes out, should be enough to finish off this game, and Barry takes game one. I mean, that was an incredible game. Of, a lot of twists and turns were going on. Jinx um, was so dominant at the beginning for Barry, and, you know, Eric as well got that Ferrothorn out there, and then he did that incredible play where he brought the Ferrothorn in on the Volcarona yes. switch out. So again, the ball positioning did keep switching between these two players, but as you said there, Marcus, the end game, Barry knew what he needed to do, and it was enough to pick up the KO onto that Heatran and remove it from the field. So game one goes to Barry in this top eight set. Yeah, that was very well done um, by Eric, the one turn you mentioned, but in the end, Barry, with his unorthodox Pokemon choices, was able to somehow overcome the odds, and um, yeah, it's always like... A little bit of like an underdog battle going on when you can see like the Tapu Koko, Chrysalia, and Nando's Therian, even though they did not make an appearance in this particular game. Then They're also the Gyarados, the Heatran, yeah. Seeing those Pokemon so many times, but Barry being a player who's known for trying to not play, like not go um, with the stream with what everyone else is doing, but trying to counter what they are doing. So yeah, coming up with crazy um, interactions and crazy combinations like that Adrenaline Orb Jinx really 
proving to not only be creative, but also really working out here, at least in this first game. And particularly against Eric's team, we mentioned the Landros. It doesn't do too well against this team, particularly against that Jinx. It'll activate the Adrenaline Orb. Jinx also has an Ice-type move with Ice Beam. Yep. Landros doesn't want to be in that situation. And Tapu Bulu is also a factor on Barry's team. Exactly. Tapu Bulu is such a strong Pokemon. But as well, when you look at Eric's team, he's got the Gyarados and the Landros. Both have Intimidate. That Adrenaline Orb is a great choice on Jinx. Not something many people would have necessarily thought of, but the tech that Barry, uh, Barry has brought to this is absolutely perfect. Yeah, Barry really proving that uh, yeah he spent his time well preparing for this matchup, and let's see if he decides to go with the same lead. It's gonna be Jinx. Which <laughs> things up a little bit. Um, we are still seeing the Jinx, but no Volcarona this time around, and also no for Arthur on Eric's side. So yeah, looks like Barry once again one step ahead here. Though that type of Coco seems to be in a very solid position once again. It really does. Jinx and Azumarill for Barry and Gyarados and Tapu Koko for Eric. Of course, the Intimidate going to activate that Adrenaline Orb, making Jinx very speedy. And interesting enough here, Jinx has got access to Fake Out, meaning Azumarill, if it is that Belly Drum set, which mm -hmm. we can assume it is, it has the Citrus Berry, yep. it could potentially get a free Belly Drum up here. Yeah, and then we have already... Um seen that I think the Lucario might also be one of those uh, redirection Pokemon using follow me and I'm not even sure if um, yeah I do think that all the moves of the Volcarona were really revealed so there's no rage powder there but um, yeah redirection always also one of those concepts that Barry really likes to utilize in his teams. Well it's going to be the fake out from Jinx going into what was the Tapu Koko so great switch in there from Eric particularly if this is going to be a belly drumming Azumarill Ferrazorn is a Pokemon you'd want in the field to face down that Ooh, Pokemon. Just the waterfall. Waterfall maybe going for the flinch here trying to stop it going off but it's not going to be enough. Belly Drum will go off from that happy little Azumarill. It's going to cut down its health, but it is going to munch on a Citrus Berry and regain some more of its HP. But the most important thing, it's got a maximized attack now. Yeah, um, we didn't see a Mega Evolution coming out from Eric Gyarados, so maybe he was just expecting the Volcarona to come in there or wanted to cover for a potential Volcarona switch in so that uh, he knew that his Ferrothorn would be safe for the turn. Now, though, Berry has to make an interesting choice here. He could either go and, uh, like, protect his Azumarill and try to, like, maybe get his Lucario into position for potential follow me's uh, but at the same time there's still that Gyarados um, on Eric's side who could say go for a Dragon Dance or target down um, the Jinx if he's expecting like some switches to come his way so um, yeah with that switching into Ferrothorn I, th I really like the position that Eric is in right now and now he really needs to capitalize on that though exactly if you're Barry you want rid of that oh, Ferrothorn from the field target into the Ferrothorn. goes for the Dragon Dance I mean that's now going to boost up your speed and attack and as we've seen Azumarill hasn't gone for something like the um, Aqua Jet priority it's gone for a play rough going to connect onto the Ferrothorn and it is enough to pick up the KO huge gonna take KO a little bit of damage but obviously play rough as well if you're facing down a Gyarados particularly one that's going to mega evolve into a dark type that's a great move to have up your sleeve yeah yeah, um, usually, or I should say, a lot of Azumarils these days opt to go for a knockoff as their um, coverage move of choice. Uh, we've also seen um, Sage and Park, for example, using Frustration. Uh -huh. However, Barry just going with a good old play rough, which is the, be the best option if you do not think that you're consistently getting off those belly drums, because of course you have the same type of attack bonus, it has some nice coverage. Um, but yeah, if you want to like really focus your team around Azumarill, most players tend to go for something like knockoff, so you can hit that Ferrothorn or the Amoongus, two of those Pokemon that can really counter a boosted Azumarill, um, and if they are running play rough. But here the play rough, um, yeah, proving to be enough to get the knockout on the Frothorn and now, as you were saying, also really threatening the Gyarados. It certainly is, and another Pokemon that's going to threaten the Gyarados is going to be a Tapu Bulu, which we see switching for Barry, of course negating the electric terrain that Tapu Koko has brought in. But we are finally going to see the Mega Evolution come off from the Gyarados, going to evolve into that Dark and Water type, going to land itself back onto the ground. So it will get a little bit of HP recovery now, um, if it can survive the attack coming out from Azumarill, if that is its option of choice. But and instead, Aqua Jet's going to go into the opposing Tapu Koko, and it is enough to pick up the KO. Wow. So Eric down to his last two Pokemon. Pokemon, yeah, so only a few turns in. This Azumarill already has proven to be such a good pick here by Barry. It is oh. also able to take that waterfall coming out from the boosted Gyarados. And it looks like this Azumarill just on its own is able Doing to so carry well. Barry um, to a kind of like quick and easy victory. Of course, we're not there yet. Eric still has something to say about that. Now sending in his Heatran though, another Pokemon that doesn't really like uh, facing down that Azumarill, especially with all those boosts. Um, so, of course, now the Gyarados is able to knock out the Azumarill if Eric decides to do that, but I would assume that 
Barry is just going for like attacks here. Azumar can target down the Heatran, and then the Tapu Bulu can target down the Gyarados. So even if Heatran protected and Gyarados knocked out the Azumar, Tapu Bulu would still be able to get that revenge KO on the Gyarados, and then Eric is down to his very last Pokemon in Heatran. Exactly, and it's one of those things. Is maybe he gonna try and stay in with his Heatran, try and get some damage off, try and make some reads? But I think the safest play here is just to go for the Aqua Jet. Like you said, if Gyarados does manage to pick up the KO on Azumar, he's still got a load of Pokemon in the back there. Aqua Jet yep, easily gonna is. pick up the KO there. Heatran's gonna leave the field as quickly as he has joined going to return to Eric as Tapu Bulu goes for a wood hammer in his dominant terrain going to smack down onto that Gyarados and pick up the KO I mean the Barry Anderson in a very very dominant game two there will advance win this set and go into top four wow so third KO for that Azumarill what a play there by Barry changing things up just going for the fake out in battle drum such a like basic play but if you don't expect it if you're not ready for it it can really catch you off guard and Eric um, as it seems was not ready for the Azumarill to come out right off the bat and Barry cashing in on that will advance into the top four here at the Malmö Regional Championships. He will be going on to face Jamie Boy, I believe. Yeah, what a, what a match, really. It's going to be a UK face-off into top four, but I mean, great play from both these players. I think... Eric, where he had maybe a little bit more of a kind of standard team, like we were saying with the Tapu Koko, the Landorus and everything, he didn't have necessarily the answers to the quirks that Barry had. In game one, he certainly did a lot of great ball positioning switches and put himself in a great position and really tried to counter what Barry was doing. But Barry also saw into that and he had a plan of his own. And unfortunately, he came out as the dominant person there as opposed to Eric. But, you know, congratulations to Eric still to come here and get top eight, particularly after losing round one. Yes. That is incredible. Yes. And that's something really, you have to really be proud well of. Yeah, and like looking at those teams, of course, always it's interesting to seeing how can these regional championships influence the meta game, what new teams are coming up, and no matter how this goes, I definitely <laughs> want to give Barry's team here a shot, well, even if he goes out against Jamie Boyd. Like, <laughs> yeah, like also Jamie's team though. At the same time, like two really unique teams coming up, um, facing against each other here in the top four. They're like buddies traveling together and so on. So that's uh -huh. already a cool story. Also, com somewhat matching hairstyles as they have. <laughs> But before that, we will have another top four game. It will be Davide Cochero from Italy playing against Ben Markham. And um, yeah, I think we will have a short interview with Barry before yeah. that can start. But then, yeah, we'll have more games. So don't go anywhere.
Welcome, Welcome back, back guys, we are still here at the Malmö Regional Championships and I'm here with the winner of what was a pretty exciting <laughs> but also in comparison to the first top 8 game, very rather fast set here. Uh, Barry, how are you feeling after that? Um, surprised, to be honest. Um, like, we've just come back from Australia so I didn't get much sleep last night at all. So I spent the night sort of thinking what I was mm -hmm. going to do against this team. It dawned on me at probably about 5am that like, if he just got Ferrothorn in Trick Room, I would have a very hard time stopping okay. that. But, uh, so I didn't think I was going to win, but obviously over the moon to have uh, come into the top four and, you know, more points for Jinx. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you were already talking about the Oceana Internationals. So did you try and like update your team a little bit from there or did you even use the same Jinx team? I think you mentioned it in the interview yesterday though. Yeah, it's exactly the same. And the weekend before Australia, there was two mid-season showdowns in London as well. Mm -hmm. So four tournaments with exactly the same team now. And so far, it seems to be have worked for you, that strategy as well, as uh, Jamie Boyd was also telling us that he didn't really have the time to change anything yes, about his team yeah. that he was like, using. It, we, we probably would have done. We, yes. we, like, we've thought of something that like, really works now, but, <laughs> but now <laughs> you're, you're, you're really with the same four. teams. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'll ask you about that encounter in a second, but back to your match against Eric. So you were saying how you were really fearing that Frothorn. Um, so in the first game, you were um, starting off with Volcarona and Jinx probably trying to li put a little bit of pressure on yeah. both... Um, that Frothorn and also potentially the Crusaya that you were expecting. Um, so with your team just having so many different options, it's like it's sometimes a little bit difficult for like as a commentator just like seeing the team preview and like oh there's so many so many different Pokemon, so much going on there. Um, what do you what would you say are like the the like main objectives that with a team that, that like what situations are you trying to create with that? Well, basically um, on team preview, I'm looking at their team and I'm thinking which Pokemon because I got three set up Pokemon on the team basically Dragon Dance, Tyranitar, Quiver Dance, Volcarona, and Belly Drum Azumarill. Mm -hmm. and I'm looking which of those options are the best best for that team. When looking at Eric's team, um, I thought Azumarill was very good against his team. The only thing that he could really hit Azumarill with was Coco and Furathorn. So I thought if he doesn't lead with both of them, mm -hmm. I can just belly drum straight away with uh, Azumarill. So that's why I led with Volcarona And that's what he did game. in the first game. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So now I switched it up for the second game, thinking yeah. that he might yeah, mm -hmm. hopefully switch things up as well, which he did. So it you know, kind of worked out. So Honestly. were you were you already kind of like planning that like sort of gambit in a way like gambling a little bit on him yeah. going for the same lead again? Yeah, I was in the in the second game. I was very scared of him. Like obviously, like the fake out into the Coco is very obvious, and the belly drum is quite obvious as well. I was scared of him um, just protecting Coco, whatever, and um, bringing in Furathorn for the Gyarados slot mm. because then he could just protect on my Aquajet next turn and power whip and knock me out there. So I was thinking, okay, so I could trade for like maybe a free Quiver Dancer next turn, but then I'd still like mm -hmm. is a Quiver Dancer worth one of my Pokemon? So yep. that would have been a, a bad situation for me. But I mean, he switched the other one, and uh, I was I was glad to see it that way around. And that definitely worked out well. So um, let's talk a little bit about um, the end gaming though because uh, we were <laughs> talking a little bit about how you were skill swapping things around. Um, first of all, at first we were under the impression that like, oh, if you just dry skin the Volcarona everything would be fine. But of course the Mold Breaker on the Gyarados is something that completely negates yes. that. And, so and actually, sorry to cut you up, but like yeah. in the first game I knew he was going to Mega Evolve the Gyarados so I skill swapped it. Yes. And I thought I wanted to get the Mold Breaker off it so that I could potentially burn it because it was it was Dragon Dance up at that time. So I wanted to get rid of the Mold Breaker so I could potentially and so I got lucky in that first game. Oh yeah, okay, it. because of course, yeah, yeah. with, with Mold Breaker, you would just bypass the flame bar yeah, entirely. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, that's 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 like the <laughs> next level stuff. Next level thinking, think yeah. <laughs> like that. But then, of course, with the skill, all the skills were going on. Eventually, you gave Dry Skin to the Heatran. So, um, and then Eric, though, calling your moves like going for the Earth Power on the on the first turn, and then the Heat Wave on the second turn. Yeah. Once you gave it back, but were you still confident um, that even if he would call those moves, that with Tapu Bulo and Azumarill, you would be able to overcome that Heatran? Yes. Um, I mean. It was just questionable about how much damage Superpower would do to Heatran. I thought it would do about 70%. Mm -hmm. And that, actually, if it was like maybe a really, really bulky Heatran, maybe Aquajet wouldn't have broken yep. the substitute, but thankfully it did. But yeah, I mean, I, I skill swapped just because I thought I want Jinx around the next turn, but like obviously I can't Aquajet the Heatran. Yes. <laughs> so like, thankfully the Coco was in Aquajet range, so I could just skill swap it back and. and <laughs> yeah, that was like just a very yeah. interesting interaction. Yeah, like, a pretty, pretty stupid move, but you know, at least it guaranteed my Jinx would yeah, exactly, stick around. Yeah, that's what we were coming up with as well. <laughs> worked out in the end. So one last question, now you're up against Jamie Boyd in the semi-finals. Yes. Um, is there any like specific rivalry going on between you two? Are you just like good sports? Uh, like elaborate a little bit about that. <laughs> well we're good friends. We travel together to Australia and to London and you know for 
uh, most of the season really so far. Uh, so we're very good friends. Uh, we did play in the final, both of, uh, of one of the mid-season showdowns. Uh, we were using slightly different teams, mm -hmm. I think. No, I was using the same team. He was using a slightly different team. And he won that final. Um, okay. I, mi I missed a, a plus two rock slide <laughs> on his Celestia or something, I think. But, but whatever. <laughs> so, no, I like... At least one of us is going to be in the final, and you know, nice that uh, Ben Markham is also in the top four yes, as well. So we've yeah, got yeah. three UK players, which is quite impressive, to be honest. So. Yeah, right. I would say so too. So um, yeah, I want to give you a little bit of time, maybe preparing. I mean, work on your prepare with. I, I would assume for. Uh, did you help each other for the top eight matches, like? A little, a little bit, bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah Jamie didn't know um, what his opponent was using going oh, okay. into the top eight, so mm -hmm. like, you know, just just <laughs> just told him to look at it on team preview. But like, I was asking him questions, and like, okay. do you think his Gyarados underspeed to the Coco <laughs> plus one speed? And yeah, we and were thinking about the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, do you think do you think that the Ferrothorn's banded? Oh, yeah. Like all the yeah. So we, we were thinking about a few things, but. Yeah, yeah, but now we're going to play each other. Yeah, so. exactly, and it's going to be a lot of fun, um, hopefully for you as well. Yeah, thank well, you we've both much. got a pretty interesting team, so yeah, hopefully, exactly. hopefully you'll enjoy it. Yes, that's like the beauty of Pokemon. So, thank you very much for coming out for this interview, and we'll be right back with yet another Top 4 game now, so stay tuned. <laughs> 